Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am working on a uniquely shaped panel. I love working on different proportions, different shapes of panels when I want to get a little bit more out of the box. I want to creatively recharge myself. I find that this is one of the most exciting methods I have and one of the easiest because it automatically forces me to think differently than I do when I'm composing a typical rectangular painting. So let's talk about some of the things that I take into account when I'm working on a uniquely shaped panel like this and how I create an image to fit into something like this. So uh, first things first, this is an hourglass painting. It came from Trakel. I love working with them. I'll have a link in the description to them. It's not an affiliate or anything. It's just to the website, but they did send it to me and I love this panel. I love the shape. It was really very inspiring to work on. And that's something that I really love is if I can get inspiration from the medium itself before I even start working on a concept for it, it just... It's really exciting to be able to set myself off on on a creative path that feels so so charged with ideas. So so it was an hourglass, obviously. I I had a few ideas right off the bat on how I could compose an image within this shape and what I could put as far as the subject matter into this. So my first instinct thought was to do two figures in the top and the bottom. I thought about doing like two almost like yin yang characters where one could be dressed darker and the other had more light and white hair and it could be contrasting in values. Uh, the second idea that I liked a lot more was doing a Grim Reaper figure and then more of like a maiden in the bottom which is a theme that I love to revisit. Uh, but ultimately, I decided that this panel was just a bit too small to accommodate that kind of design for both sides to be able to fully render a figure in, in that space. So I decided instead to create it as if it was like a window into the space and it would inform the shapes that we're seeing through it and it would create a bit of a focal point in the middle there. I could just use the shape to, to really, uh, what's the word, marry together, I suppose, the image and the panel shape. So it does feel like you're almost looking through a window into something. But anyways, that is what helped me to start working more on this path. So I, I had a few challenges. It was really fun to work with. I, I really do like having issues with art as far as like planning and figuring out where to put things when it finally works out. It just feels like all the puzzle pieces come together. It's really satisfying and exciting. So, so for this, it is broken into two halves. It's very symmetrical and it again has that like pinch point right in the middle. So it naturally brings the eye right to that point, right in the middle of the panel. So I needed to design around that space. Specifically, I had to think about how was I going to direct the eyes? Did I want it to be right where the panel was already forcing us to look? Or did I want to push it a little bit more? So ultimately, I decided to put a moth just above that center point so that it would have the flow of the shape of the wings. It would follow the curve of the hourglass at the top and then funnel into that dip. And I like that. I think that it worked with that that flow and the shape that was already naturally occurring there. And it helps push the eye up more rather than keeping it focused right in the middle of the painting. It, it tips it up and then it brings it up even more into the character's face. Oh, and really quickly, this painting, which is just simply titled The Hourglass is available at my shop. So if you'd like the original, there's a link in the description that'll take you over to my shop so you can check it out. I, I love the final look. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was a really fun one to work on, but but anyways, yes, that link is down below. So some practicalities of working with shaped panels or honestly with the technique that I use, any panels, I like to apply watercolor paper and adhere it to the raw panel using matte medium. It's an archival glue that works great for artwork like this. So I apply those, I let that totally dry. And then it's time to cut out the watercolor paper so that it is perfectly cut. 
to the shape of the panel. And there's no overhang, of course. And uh, this shape was a little bit trickier, which is no surprise. There's a lot of little, little in, in cuts that I needed to make sure that I conformed to as far as like that curve in the middle of the hourglass and then around it. And uh, yeah, it took a lot more attention to detail to cut this one out. And often when I'm working on a panel, it's actually pretty straightforward where I can just trace around the panel with my utility knife. With this, I actually had to, well, basically do that from the back like I usually do. But then I also had to flip it to the front so that I could get a second pass at any of the overhangs that didn't quite get cut smoothly. And then I could get it a little bit more flush with the panel. It, it took a little bit more finesse and attention and a lot more time than usual. But in the end, the effect was worth it. It became a, a watercolor paintable surface that is in this unique shape. So I, I absolutely love working this way, being able to adhere my paper down. It keeps the paper from warping at all. So I can really put basically as many layers as the paper itself will allow and there will be no buckling. And I, I love this process. Let's talk about some of my favorite things about this painting and least favorite things while working on it. So my, my favorite thing, I really loved working with this light angle on her face. It's relatively subtle, but it was really fun to work with an undershot of light so that it was hitting from below. So that way it looked like the moth was a bit of the light source on her face, but it's really fun to work with really dramatic and different light sources like this. You can see the planes of the face differently. And I just, I really enjoyed that. I like what it did to, to the direction of the piece. It just, I like it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's something that I, I would like to do more of to be very intentional with the way that the shadows form on the face and, and the entire paintings that I work on. But, um, but yeah, being very specific about that did give a little bit more of a story and connection between her and the moth. And I just, I liked that a lot. My least favorite part about this painting was definitely working on the moth. So the moth went through a lot of iterations and a lot of it actually didn't end up getting recorded because I was in like panic fix mode. <laughs> when something goes wrong, I tend to just want to like shut everything off, stop having the camera right in my face. And I just want to fix it as quickly as possible because while it's not right and it's not working, it causes me like so much stress and angst for my painting. I just, I have a very hard time letting things sit when they're not correct. So I'm trying to remember all the iterations that it went through. It went through several, it was definitely, uh, a less seamless process to get the moth and the the drips from the moth the way that I wanted. It started off black, I think, and it didn't have enough contrast with the the character around it, so you couldn't really clearly see it. I ended up doing the gold leaf, and this is a lesson that I need to practice doing gold leaf because that was a bit of a struggle of getting it to look correct. I, I tend to accidentally use the, the gold leaf glue too thickly. So it tends to create like a rougher texture with the gold leaf than I would like. So that was one of the problems. And then I don't know why I it, it had to have been again, more contrast issues, but I ended up outlining parts of the gold with black again. It's just, it was, it was a fight <laughs> and I'm happy with the outcome of this piece, but that, that was uh, an eye opener on the fact that I really have no idea how to use gold leaf well. So I think I'm going to do some, some practice pieces that can just be really small for myself. I can get a little bit better handle on how to use those tools so that I can get it to look to the level that I want it to look. And it would also be helpful to have a few samples lying around so that I can compare it to the painting to make sure that the value of the gold leaf is correct with the things around it. So the hard thing with gold leaf is that depending on how the light is hitting it, it can either be really light or basically black depending on what it's reflecting. So it can be hard to make sure that 
whatever the item, the thing, not the item, the thing that you've created in your painting is gold leafed, has the contrast that it needs with the things surrounding it because it can be so, such a chameleon way of creating it. So, so that would be helpful to have uh, a few little samples around. I mean, I have the gold leaf already, but just having it on a paper that I can hold up to the painting would be nice. That would be ideal and useful. So yes, those are some lessons for future me. Learn how to use gold leaf better. Also, I needed to bring in a couple thicker pieces of wood that I could use to prop up my hand. It wasn't something that I thought about when I first started this, but I have ran into it in the past when I've worked on panels like this. So this panel is, I think it's half an inch thick. Yes, it's half an inch thick. So it has a really nice heft to it. It hangs on the wall really nicely. Obviously it can't and doesn't need framed, but um, because of that really thick edge and because the panel itself is relatively small, there's not like space on the painting itself to rest my hand. So I needed to go and get something to prop it up. That way I could have my hand outside of the painting and it would still be on the same level. Uh, and yeah, that wasn't a big deal. It was just a, a little side thing that I needed to go take care of really quick. And then once I did, the painting process was much more enjoyable and less tiring on my hand. Another favorite part of this painting is actually the background. I, I love the, the colors that come together. It's just so buttery and soft. And I love the like darker shadowy pigments in there. I, I do not remember what I mixed to create that background and I am kicking myself for not keeping notes on that because I just, I love that combination and I really wish that I could remember what, what paints I used to create it. I've tried to recreate it a couple of times and it's just, it's not there. It's not quite right and I don't know what it was. So that might be a pursuit that I try to figure out and unlock for a while now. I just, I really want to know what it was. I want to be able to utilize that in the future, but, but maybe that just means I just need to experiment and explore and enjoy the process more and then make sure to pay attention and take notes when it's something that really works out well. And that is about it for today. This original painting is available at my shop. There's a link in the description that'll take you over there. And I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are incredible. You help me to make art every day. So thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.